Thank you for coming back to this course on spiritual gifts. This is session 25 on the gift of interpretation. Our last gift had to do with the gift of tongues. And tongues and interpretation go hand in hand. They're linked with each other. And so, since we talked about tongues last time, it's important that we talk about interpretation during this session so that we understand that link between the two. We mentioned in the last session that tongues is one of three varieties. It's either speaking a heavenly language, one that you have no idea what you're saying. To others, it may even sound like nonsense, but it is worshiping God in private. Another is using that same nonsense language at church with a message that God wants that church to hear. And that's where the gift of interpretation comes in, that someone must be present to be able to interpret the message. And the final context that we talked about tongues was in a public setting where it's an evangelistic thrust. People hear the gospel being preached in their own language, but the person speaking it doesn't know that language. The Holy Spirit empowers them supernaturally to be able to speak that language. We also talked about how controversial this gift is. And I gave a plea to those who are in the church that we be united on this issue, that we give each other grace on the issue and the freedom to worship God as God has led each community to worship. And that ultimately, none of these questions are really all that important as long as we, as Paul says, preach Christ and Him crucified, and that each of us must accept Christ personally. Well, in school, we study about the planets. And of course, if you weren't sure, we're on planet Earth. And there's then Venus going closer to the sun, but there's a small planet that's very near the sun called Mercury. And because it's so close to the sun, it makes its circle around the sun much quicker than the other planets. It looks, when you look in the heavens, it is moving faster than all the other planets to get around the sun. Well, in Roman times, and developing a mythology about gods, they developed the god uh, called Mercury, who was so fast that he was always portrayed with wings on his sandals and wings on his head, and he moved very quickly. And his purpose was to deliver messages. He was the messenger of the gods. Well, this, in fact, is the idea behind tongues and the message that was delivered by Mercury was a message the people needed to hear and they heard it in their own language. Well, we've been looking about tongues and now hand in hand with interpretation. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For the most part, we will remain in 1 Corinthians 12 and also look at a passage in 1 Corinthians 14. The Greek word for interpretation is Hanmaniya, Hanmaniya, and those of you looking in Strong's, it's G2058. And in Strong's, we learn a little bit about what does this term mean. I should tell you that I've also used another tool to study the Bible called Vine's Dictionary of Biblical Terms. And it's also a very helpful tool to conduct Bible study it explains what words mean in the Greek. Well, this word means to translate what has been spoken, and it's been spoken more or less obscurely. I use the term nonsense language. Obscurely means it's not generally known by the people, and it may not be known at all. The root word of uh, this Greek term Heinmania, is to translate what has been spoken or written in a foreign language into the vernacular, 
another very big word that just means the language used by the common people. Also in vines, it conveys the idea of expounding or explaining a message that has been given. When interpretation is used in 1 Corinthians 14, a different uh, term out of the Greek is used, dermanua, and this is G1329. And it conveys a slightly different meaning, to unfold the message of what is being said and then to translate it into one's own native language. So as you look at the Greek word, generally it means the idea of translation. And that translation tends to be from a language that's obscure in the spiritual gift, it's unknown. And to put it in the language of the common people, what people would use in everyday life. So what's the purpose of interpretation? Well, as before, in tongues we said, sometimes it just doesn't make sense why God would do this. But it does make sense that if there's the gift of tongues, that there would be the gift of interpretation. Why would God have a language we could not understand? But in using a language that is a sign gift, that in fact there is a God, it would make sense there would also be a spiritual gift to interpret a language that's unknown. As we look at the role of interpretation, as with tongues, it falls in that last category of communicating a special message to the church. And the gift mix that sometimes clusters around interpretation, of course, is tongues. Some people speak not only tongues, but they have the ability to interpret what's being spoken. But most of the people who speak tongues speak just tongues and someone else interprets. Other gifts sometimes associated with tongue interpretation are faith, discernment, and miracles. All of uh, the ones that I have mentioned help to draw out the meaning of what the message has been given so that when it's explained to the congregation, it's explained accurately and it's explained in a way that people can understand. Well, this time I did go back to the commentaries to see what have people said who know much more about the Bible than I do. Chuck Smith, whom we have used several times, says that the, it's the only gift, the only gift that a person is encouraged to pray for. Let's look at that. 1 Corinthians 14, if you'll just come across another uh, couple of chapters, 14, and let's look down at verse 13. For this reason, Anyone who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret what he says. So it isn't everybody praying for that gift. It's if you do speak in tongues, then you can pray and ask God to give you the supernatural ability to understand what you have just said. To me, that makes perfect sense. So that the person who is speaking in tongues and speaking a nonsense language, would they themselves understand what was being said? To give them their own sense of satisfaction in knowing what was the message I just gave. So it's the only one that you can pray for and say, God, give me this gift. But only people who have the gifts of tongues may pray that prayer. We have said before that when you accept Christ, at the moment of salvation, at the very time you are converted, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you and He brings gifts that God designed and equipped you to have to accomplish your unique purpose in life. And that you get all of the gifts that you're supposed to have at that point. And that later in your Christian life, if it seems like you've had a new gift given to you, it was a gift that was buried, a gift that was unused, a gift that was unexposed to ministry 
And as you minister, that gift becomes more evident in your life. This, however, says there's just one exception, and that is if you have the gift of tongues, you may pray that you also have the gift of interpretation. Once again, I want to remind you the caution that no one should speak in tongues in the church unless an interpreter is present. Well, we used as our visual aid in tongues this little set of symbols that comes from the word processing program Word and the font type called Webdings. And I mentioned that in that particular program, that particular font, each symbol actually means something. And so I want you to remember not only the kind of symbolic nonsense that's up there, but the fact that it actually does spell out tongues in that font. So it was interpreted by another program to say, that's what it says. Even though to most of us, it just looks like a bunch of scribbles on the board. Well, as far as a biblical example, the only place that interpretation is really discussed in depth is in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. As in the other gifts, it's only mentioned in other passages. So, I don't have a biblical example. There is no example of someone in, this, in the Bible actually interpreting a message. But there are instructions from Paul about how to use the gift of interpretation and its relative uh, importance as to prophecy. But I do have a personal example. I have a friend named David whom I have known for many, many years and we are close friends. We've been colleagues in teaching about spiritual gifts in classes at my church and I know that he would share a story with me that actually happened. And so I didn't witness this, but my friend David did, so it's second hand. But I believe that it did happen. David and his brother-in-law are both of them in the camp that believes that the spiritual gifts of tongues and interpretation are not for this generation, that they ceased a long ago. And then a friend of them theirs invited them to come to the charismatic church. And David's always one of those people who wants to go out and experience all that Christianity has to offer. He said, I'm going to be open-minded. I'll go and I'll see uh, what happens at a charismatic church. Well, he and his brother-in-law go in along with the person who invited him. And sure enough, the, mess the service starts and somebody stands up and starts speaking in tongues. And David said he started thinking, oh yeah, here we go, speaking this nonsense language, making it up while they're going, and they're just saying stuff that comes to mind. This is pretty, okay, come on, come on, come on, finish up. His brother-in-law, however, had a far different reaction. He was sitting there going, oh my God, I understand what the person is saying. And then the next thought was, no, 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 no. I can't understand ways. I'm just making it up. I mean, I don't like the fact that he's speaking nonsense, so my brain is working, so it's just making up the language so that I'm not confused. Yeah, that's it. That's it. He just, ah. And then someone standed, stood up and gave the interpretation of the message. It was the identical message that his brother-in-law had heard in his thinking. And David said, when his brother-in-law ch shared that story, that was the day he changed from spiritual gifts are not for this generation to spiritual gifts do belong in the church today. And that's why I say it's important for us not to look down on others, not say that it couldn't possibly be a gift. It, it ended long ago. And believe that, at least for some people, they believe that it's true. And my personal opinion is that the gifts of tongues, the gifts of interpretation, the gifts of healing, the gifts of miracles are for this generation. We sometimes call those gifts the miraculous gifts. Well, truthfully, all of the gifts are miraculous because it's the Holy Spirit 
giving his supernatural power to accomplish things that we could never do in our own power. I think a better uh, label for these gifts is sign gifts, which is actually used in the Bible. That is, is a sign gift. All of those are signs typically to unbelievers that there is a God and that he is real, that he does exist, and that what is happening right now authenticates, validates, proves that there is a God. So come to Christ, accept him as your savior. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com. Well, as we've done before, I have some questions for you. And while you listen to these questions, please have an open mind and not only think, have I done this in my own walk with Christ, but think about, is this something you feel kind of a tug of your heart? You feel drawn towards it for some reason that you don't fully understand. What I'm saying is be open-minded and kind of listen to the whisper of the Spirit of what he's saying to you. Has God ever worked through you to know what someone is saying who is speaking in tongues? Number two, has God worked through you to actually explain in an accurate and true way the contents of a message spoken in tongues? And third, has God ever worked through you to sense in your mind the meaning of a message spoken in tongues that's being shared by another? If you answered yes to any of those questions, or if you thought your heart was being drawn to one of those, as if that was something that you're open to what God might do in your life, then please go out and be open to the fact that God may very well put you in a setting where like David's brother-in-law, you're sitting there, someone speaks in tongues, and in your mind you understand what's being said. Therefore, you would know there is a God. He is real, he is true, and he has just shown you something that very few people actually experience. The ability supernaturally given to you to be able to take words that to most of us sound like nonsense and understand the heavenly language and explain and expound on that message to your brothers and sisters in the church. Well, this really concludes our discussion about these very um, controversial gifts, but there's one more gift that is associated with the mouth that we will talk about next time, and that is the spiritual gift of intercession, of praying. So please come back and join us then.